Nobody else. You guys I'll always I'll got have, a million I'll, questions I'll for have, me for Brock when he's not here. I'll have one last thing, because yeah. uh, uh, it's worth talking about while we're here. Um, how many of you are paying attention to QOZs or Qualified Opportunity Zones? So uh, probably worth giving uh, just a, a quick update on what's happening on that front. So Puerto Rico has not yet approved the taxes of Qualified Opportunity Zones here, so we're not live. The IRS has. We're good to go from the federal government's perspective. But down here, Puerto Rico hasn't approved it yet, meaning anything that you do down here has to pay Puerto Rican taxes, which means it's not, thus it's not at all interesting. No one would invest a penny in a qualified opportunity zone deal down here. So just be paying attention to that, be mindful of that fact. Very, very likely that that'll get approved sometime soon. Um, so all good. A little bit. All, all good, but that it just be mindful of that fact. It's something that some people are not aware of. Uh, it's not all systems go yet, but it's still good enough to get out there and be, you know, looking for deals and things of that nature. Because I think the demand is going to be there. I my projections previously was that I think a hundred billion dollars of capital is going to get funneled into qualified opportunity zones around the country, which is a wonderful thing, a wonderful, wonderful thing, because that's capital that's going into places where economic stimulus is needed all over the country. You think but that, that money's not going to get divided and split up amongst these places equally. You know, it's going to end up in the regions where people are doing the best work and finding the best deals and out there beating the drone, you know, waving the flag. And so, uh, you know, Puerto Rico is in a position that it can potentially get, you know, hopefully more than its fair share of, of that. But that requires, you know, people doing the work and Puerto Rico being on the map. Today it's not yet on it, and, and, and down here when it does happen, we're 96% of the island is a qualified opportunity zone. It's also the only qualified opportunity zone that's a luxury destination, what I'm meaning you're competing with Oakland, Inglewood, Bronx, you know, etc. And you know, there's just things that can be done down here that are very different than everywhere else. Uh, Super exciting. One other thing too, as we talk about community, there's gonna, there's a very, very good chance that there's gonna be some people that come down here and start setting up businesses to build qualified opportunity zone deals that are gonna be running scams of sorts. Mm. And uh, you know, it's important you know, that the community pays attention to this and polices itself. When $100 billion of capital is being unleashed, you know, some of the worst possible people show up and they can screw it up for everyone. So uh, if you're following this, you know, kind of pay attention to that people. Because uh, it's, you know, this is going to be the wild, wild west around the country for, you know, the first six months. <laughs> While people figure out what's actually going on. Any thoughts on the uh, legalization of hemp and uh, what hemp can do for Puerto Rico in particular? I mean, hemp's uh, an incredible product. I mean, from construction, hemp creep, paper, clothing, hemp's great. Uh, hemp's wonderful. I think hemp is the future in so many ways. Forget cannabis. Hemp. Hemp is. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't understand why hemp was ever an issue. <laughs> do pump them. I, I don't. <laughs> Want to point fingers? <laughs> Shout out to Dupont Family, man. I'm never mad at anybody that ever takes over an industry. I'm really not. I just, you know, I'm a little jealous that I wasn't them in the 30s. Well, but, again, it, 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 it's it's been also good not to judge. We weren't there at that time in those circumstances. I don't think they knew plastic was as harmful as it was. I really don't. I don't think they made a decision based on the environmental impact. I think they made a decision based on they had the plastic industry sold up. They see hemp as a competitor. I can't believe that people believe that plastic would do what it did to our environment over the course of 70 years, and they would have kept that attitude because they could have easily pivoted. They could have easily pivoted and took hemp and literally made the products. They were already a big enough company, a big enough corporation, but they didn't do so because they already had all the plastic, you know, in full swing, all the companies, all the manufacturing plants, and everything. And I was like, yeah, no, let's we'll do this. But I literally don't believe, I, I've thought of that before, honestly. I don't believe they thought to themselves that plastic was going to 
be that harmful to the environment. And it doesn't serve anyone right now to be overly judging the past. It's about what we do right now in the present. You know, because we have a lot of work to do. Accurate. You, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, the qualified opportunity zones, uh, I don't know too much about them yet, but I've heard that the most of the incentive falls within 2019, and it sort of drops off and doesn't it become worse after that. Do you, can you speak to that at all? Especially considering where we go, we may not qualify for a while yet. Well, the, well, the, 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 the key is, Thing with the whole thing with QOZ is this deferment of taxes, right? So you have the ability to defer your taxes for up to seven years and that clock is already ticking. So with Puerto Rico or wherever else that's already dragging their feet and doesn't have the regulations in place, so for your tax deferment, the time is running shorter and shorter because the bill's already enacted and, and you know it already began. So from that perspective, it's running shorter. So the overall benefit that you could have potentially had is decreasing, but there's still plenty of benefits left, if that makes sense. So most of the activity I've seen around OSC has been with real estate. Is there a no. bigger capital gain money in cloud or real estate? Is there something more there? That well, you can do lots of other things, but real estate is where most of the vast, vast majority of it is going to end up because people are saying, I, I've got a $100,000 check that I owe to the IRS in the form of capital gains, and I can take that same $100,000 check and invest it into something else and get it back tax-free 10 years from now. And so they're not really looking to take risk with it. They're looking, what is, a, what is a, an eligible asset class that I can park that money in and know that it's safe and I'll get it back in 10 years? And real estate is one of those things that just everybody's like, I'm happy parking my money in real estate for 10 years. Especially in Puerto Rico. It, 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 and, and it has to be invested in six months and all this stuff, and there's all these set of rules, so almost all of it's gonna go into um, real estate, but it, it can be done, you can do startups, you can do all sorts of things. It's just, most of the, it's gonna end up mostly in real estate, because they're looking for just a really safe, kind of like, you know, uh, park it and forget it for 10 years, someone like a property manager and whoever you fund through like takes care of it, and that's it. You know, they're not looking for risk. They're looking for, they're not looking for returns either. They're looking to park the money and get it back with a real estate, you know, type of, you know, return. 12% pay property off for six years, a time you pay the taxes. You know, that's typically what people are thinking. They're not thinking of anything like outrageous. You know, and then at the end of the day, you took the money you were gonna pay taxes with, and you end up with a free property with it. You still pay your taxes with it, you just pay with it later on, like, Oh no, this is, a, this is the most important tax legislation in 50 years. Well, oh, Trump but the, well, the other thing that's so amazing about this is the government said in this case, instead of the government taking the tax money and then the government going out and helping people, the government said, you don't have to pay us. As long as you invest in the areas that are in need of support, and then it's your job to manage that investment for 10 years, and if you do that, you didn't have to pay any tax. The government is outsourcing its job of helping neighborhoods that are in need of financial stimulus to the taxpayer. The government is outsourcing it to the taxpayer. This is a huge, I mean, the implications of that, if it's successful, if it demonstrates that this works so much better, I mean, the precedent that could be set here you know, could change all the world's governments. It, it, it normally you give the government the money and the government inefficiently, not, not because they're um, bad, but because it's a big bloated bureaucracy, it's gonna be a very leaky boat. You know, it's not their core competency. You know, you have a big organization, your money, you're gonna do a good job managing that to the best of your abilities and make sure that stuff's safe. You know, you're gonna go make sure that that laundry mat or that low-income housing or that whatever it is that you're investing in in that neighborhood that's needed is gonna be taken care of because it's your money at the end of the day. The government has given you the incentive to make sure it's done well. And if you do a good job of it, you didn't have to pay tax on it. So the government is outsourcing the job to you and you get to be the beneficiary of it. That's a huge, huge, huge thing. And if it works, it'll, potentially change taxes around the world forever.
it, honestly, honestly, it really is, really is an incredible opportunity. It, I, I would say between that and the legalization of hemp are probably Trump's biggest achievements as president. I would say honestly, like without question. The implications that both of those bills are gonna have the Farm and Jobs Act of 2017 um, are gonna literally transform our country in a variety of ways. So regardless of anything else he does or says, those two things in itself are literally gonna change a lot of things. I mean, but there's also two, you know, there's all the, the back end of that is, you know, these, these, these governments, you know, they're not getting that tax money. So a lot of these governments, they're having to cut their budget substantially, so we'll see how that plays out. But the back end of it is us as, as, as individuals within society, we can benefit from this tremendously in a variety of ways. There's two ways. There's one is the way, like Brock mentioned, there's guys like Brock got X number of capital gains uh, taxes that they're gonna pay out anyway that they would rather allocate that money into investments, and there's other people who need those investments. So there's a variety of ways that you can get involved. I suggest you do more research and see if you can put together some projects because I promise you there's tons of them here in Puerto Rico. Yeah, and if you, if you identify and find something really interesting, uh, you also can always come to me. Um, I'm happy to help in this area because I'm very interested in Puerto Rico's success in this area. I mean, Puerto Rico stands to get billions or tens of billions of dollars potentially uh, of investment you know, into its real estate sector. And you also just happen to know a lot of people with capital gains. I, I'm going to ask another question just because you have the opportunity. You mentioned earlier, you know, people that you want to be around, you know, in this bear market. Last week you were talking about sacred geometry and you've met a lot of people. And I'm saying on a deeper level, what are some of the things that you'd recommend to this crowd to study, to improve ourselves? I mean, not just the economics of it, not just, I mean, what are the deeper truths that you could share with us? What things should we research? If you have that opportunity, uh, I, I would just love to hear your wisdom. Book suggestions, book suggestions, probably. You read a lot, I know you do. I've been in your room. Or books, philosophies, just the whole gamut of like, what can we do to better ourselves to be better prepared for this future we're seeing? Yeah, that's a great question. Layers, layers to it. Great question. Well, I'm trying to give a, a good universal answer. Um, and, and there may not be one, so. Yeah, it, 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 but no, there should be a way to, 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 to um, generalize the, the statement. A lot of it is, you know, understanding your purpose. You know, if you know your purpose, awesome. You're well on your way. If you don't know your purpose, you know, why are you here? What are you doing here? Because your life matters. Every one of us matters. And I know sometimes you get down and maybe you think, I mean, significant, I don't matter, you matter. You are here with a purpose. And if you know it, awesome. If you don't, try and find it. One of the things that I often uh, talk about is this Japanese concept of ikigai, which is figuring out what you're good at. I mean, know your skills, know your strengths. Figuring out what you love, or you know, what you're passionate about, and figuring out what the world needs. And when you figure out what you're good at, what you love, and what the world needs, the intersection of that Venn diagram is your life's purpose. And that might change over time. It's not saying that your entire life is devoted to this one thing, but you know, that's probably what you should be doing for right now. And so, if you're not in that place, if you're not on that path, it's something to think about because the vast majority of the world is not living their purpose. They're trying to make money. And I understand that money is needed, but they're doing things they don't like. Well, a lot of people are you know, going, oh, my dream, my goal is I want to make a million dollars. And they're like, you know, work and work and do whatever, whatever. whatever. You know, and they're not happy and they're not happy, but they're like, oh, but I'm going to get my, you know, one day, one day, I'm going to add that happiness on it, reach my goal, working, 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 and then for those that do eventually achieve that goal, they get there, and they're not happy. <laughs> like, they're like, but I thought this was going to make me happy, and now they've just spent a huge chunk of their lives in pursuit of an illusion, in pursuit of this false sense of happiness they thought was gonna be at the end of that rainbow. And they thought that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow was going to bring them joy and happiness. 
Um, you know, it's not bad. You know, money is, uh, uh, you know, find, find, your, find your purpose is probably the most important thing. It's kind of just a generalized thing. And then keep, you know, asking the questions. Keep asking why, you know, you know once you figure out why you're here and you know, what you're doing and how you can make an impact, you know, understand that the big things aren't done by yourself. None of us can do very much on our own. You know, all big things are done by us and teams and groups. It takes teamwork to make any of these dreams work. And so um, that's another thing. One, one, one last thing I'd also like to add, um, because this is what keeps me up at night. Puerto Rico only has two or three weeks of food. Puerto Rico has no food resilience. There's no food security here. And uh, if a Category 5 hurricane were to hit Miami, and something were to hit here too, oh, wow. But Jones Act, everything else. We got major problems. Very, very interested in the, you know, the agricultural industry, and specifically, obviously, growing food wisely. Very interested in my hands dirty in the soil, planting seeds, growing things, growing food. That's uh, just something I want to uh, point out to everybody. It's absolutely critical. Have you met uh, Gino Rossi, Las National Farms? Yeah. Would love to reconnect. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, yeah. If you want to facilitate. Of course, hundred percent. So we're definitely doing a lot of work here, like lately with the agricultural stuff. Uh, you know, we're gonna have a. Actually, we're gonna. Uh, I think I've mentioned to almost all of you. Um, I actually signed on as chief operation officer at Hemp Project. So we're gonna start to do uh, meetups based on the hemp industry as well on a different day as well. So you guys stay tuned for that. Um, so I want to thank you, my brother. Unless we have any more questions, questions, questions. We got questions. We got answers. Anybody have any questions? No more questions. So I want to thank you, my brother. Thank you. No, no, I thank you. Like I thank, thank you, I, I thank you once again. Oh, us. I, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys realize, but you know, it's one one of the things that Go you was, team. and what you were saying about the uh, hundred billion dollars in capital gains that would come to this island that you predicted. I wonder, and I don't think they'll ever possible that it would be possible, but I wonder if it's ever possible if we could ever have a metric of how much money you brought to this island. Because I promise you that number is high. I mean, <laughs> I, like people have no idea how many people you brought here and how much activity you stirred on this island. And me as a Puerto Rican, I appreciate you, my brother. I think. It's, yeah, it takes all of us. <laughs> we do our parts. Once again, I appreciate you guys. Thank you, Crypto Monday, San Juan edition. Shout out to Red Monkey. We appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Woo!